My initial response was shock. You know, I was hard on myself. You know, why did this happen to me? You know, what did I do to deserve this? I kind of fell into a bit of a depression for about five, six months. I stayed home a lot, you know, I didn't go out. I slept a lot um, because I had this kind of an ache inside me. Like many of the people inside this church, Michael is one of over 2,000 Canadians diagnosed with HIV each year. Almost half are men who have sex with men. When Michael was diagnosed, he had a partner and a good job. So I was dating uh, someone at the time and uh, he was a bit of a needle user, a substance user, and um, I wasn't aware. And uh, when you're in love, you're kind of blinded, so you just forget about those things. And then one weekend after, it was his birthday weekend, I came back to our place and I found out you know, there were some needles in the sink, a couple of people passed out from a weekend of partying, and uh, so I went and got tested. And um, yeah, about a week later, I found out that you know, I was positive. Michael thinks his partner gave him HIV. The diagnosis caused him to break up, but that wasn't Michael's only loss. Shortly after, he decided to tell his boss about his HIV status. I thought, you know, she grew up in the 80s, had a lot of, you know, gay, queer, identified friends, so I thought she would be a great person to tell as a confidant. But sadly, she, you know, was kind of stigmatized about it, and uh, just before Christmas, um, I was let go. So as soon as I was let go, um, I was really in a dark spot. I didn't know what to do. Michael then lost some of his friends after he told them he was HIV positive. Initially, there were a few people who were really upset about it, right? And they were very, you know, kind of stigmatizing me, saying, you know, that's what happens when you're a sexually active gay man, you have a lot of partners. Like, there was just a lot of judgment. And it was really difficult, you know, to be with someone as a friend or any sort of support when they're always looking at you with pity or disgust and things like that. So um, by their choice and my choice, I had to cut out quite a few um, individuals. Morning, Grace. Hello, how are you? I'm good, how are you doing? Thank you. All alone, yeah, Michael turned to the AIDS time. Committee of Toronto to find um, information so about HIV. It was nice to, to come across that because I was feeling, you know, pretty isolated at the time. I was, you know, um, wondering who were my friends, so I didn't have a lot of supports. Um, I hadn't told my family at the time, so I felt really isolated. So it was a bit of a relief to meet other people with HIV. But Michael feared the worst from his family. So he let them know about his HIV status on MTV's Being Positive in 2013. If I'm in this situation, how many other people are like that? It took a while, but over time Michael's family began to accept his diagnosis. He also began volunteering at the AIDS Committee of Toronto, which turned into a job. Now he works full-time as a peer youth outreach coordinator. So when we do outreach and workshops in the community, this is where we pull things from. So we have a lot of safer sex kits, which are condom and lube packs, and PYO specifically has their own. Um, we distribute these to the clubs, we get our volunteers to take them for us. Part of Michael's job at the AIDS Committee of Toronto includes attending World AIDS Day ceremonies. These days, he no longer feels alone and hopes no HIV-positive person will ever feel alone again. It gave me that opportunity to volunteer, but also then, you know, to get a job here and work with other people living with HIV and then, you know, complete the circle by giving back the support that I initially received. 